Welcome to the Cape Information Technology IA walkthrough done by me, Mr. Charles. This video in somehow, some way is going to help you with your journey through your Cape Information Technology IA, either Unit 1 or Unit 2. Just to let you know, the sources of all the information that are inside this video will source from 1, the official syllabus, which you will see a link in the description for, 2, the examiner's reports for the old syllabus because that has a treasure trove of information about how they mark the IAs, and three, 10 plus years of experience teaching Cape Information Technology and submitting IAs every single year. So, first of all, enjoy. I hope the information helps you. And second of all, I am not your teacher. This is a guide. And because it's a guide, I will give some best practices that I would have seen in the different sources and things that I would have done myself. But if your teacher requires you to do something different, please listen to your teacher, but also read the syllabus and read the examiner's reports. And I hope that you do well in your Cape ITI. All right, this is the final video for the unit one part of the IT um, IE. So we, gone through, we went through justification in the previous video would have helped you with that. And now we on to references. So references, according to the syllabus, says that you should have a presentation section, which is with two marks. Now this is an easy two marks, like two marks that you must get because it's free, legitimately free. So you see paper is organized and well structured. Now you know if, you watch, if you've been watching the videos from the start, we did that from a long time. Our paper is well organized with headings, subheadings, table of contents, everything is already updated, but I'll show you all that again, so we just make sure everything is updated. Cover, content page, and abstract, present, and complete. Um, so cover, table of contents, and abstract, and then layout and references, I'll show you that last, right? So let's go back to our document, and let's jump to the top where we have cover. Now remember, I told you all to let's leave this space here, because we will fill it out, all right? So the cover, um, what tends to happen is that over the years, CXC is kind of, they just give you like a new update on what's supposed to be on the cover sometimes, but for the most part, every time, now your teacher would get the information because CXC, CXC usually releases a document to give teachers guidelines on what the cover page is supposed to look like, but your cover page should be the name, your school, candidate number, your teacher, and the title right so you fill that up which will be whatever the hardest part here is the title because most people just put information technology ie but you could give it a name if you feel like it so i'm going to put this as the digitization yeah, the digitization of the school, school name, cafeteria, right? Digitization of the school name cafeteria. I don't know what they, they can't take away a mark for you not giving it a, a title. Some people just put information technology IA. You do whatever your teacher tells you to do, right? But name, school, candidate, number, teacher. And you could put any date, you could put whatever bars I say. Um, I've realized over the years, sometimes CXC changes the things that are supposed to be on the cover page. And teachers are just given it. But if, it, if they do have any new information, this is all they need, right? So we have that. And now we reach to the table of contents. So the table of contents should have auto-updated all the way through. But if it didn't update... You just click on it here and then click the refresh button and it will auto update with all the things that you need to. Be very, very careful with the appendix. The appendix is supposed to start at a new numbering. I would have showed you all this in video one, how to get the appendix to have a totally different new numbering. So that when you reference it in the appendix, you'll be, you will be able to see which page it is on. So you'll have to go through your document when you finish and make sure that every time you reference a graph in the appendix, you can see which page it is on. Um, and this is the final layout for it, right? Now we reach the abstract. The abstract, we... Why is there a whole blank page here? I want to abstract. Find your way back up, right? Abstract is still here. Yeah, right, good. So abstract. 
abstract is a short uh, condensed version of what your whole project is and what you are going to try to do is you're going to try to give an overview of what is um of what the project is about and what it intends to accomplish you could go and find all sorts of resources about how to write an abstract you can get sample abstracts you can do whatever you want doesn't matter i'll just give you a very very straightforward one but as i said everybody's project is different so your abstract is going to sound different as you go along right so this one would be um this document lays out the problem that the school name cafeteria is having and is having. It goes through, yeah, that's kind of going through your table of contents. It goes through and no, it seeks to analyze seeks to analyze the problem using various fact-finding techniques such as interviews questionnaires and observations from the Findings a um, some possible solutions were put forward and the best the best solution was chosen in the end. Tada, right here we could as an abstract. Right, basically that says this is what the document intended to do, this is how we did it, this is what we got, and this is what happened in the end. Right? But as I said, teacher, ask the teacher, you could Google resources on how to write an abstract and you may get abstracts that are longer and shorter. Let's remember you have fifteen hundred words in this arm I and you ain't really trying to waste words on the abstract, which is a piece of a mark, right? But it must show that. So once we get through the abstract, what we want to do next is we want to go through and make sure that the document is laid out the way we want it. So I'll just zoom out a little bit and we'll make sure that there are no extra pages. So problem definition, definition abstract is abstract, Gantt chart is Gantt chart. Um, the heading is supposed to be a little bigger than the um, normal text, so you could go in, you could go through and um, change the heading. The heading one values, I believe. Yeah, so you just make sure that the heading one settings are set to big. You could go and do that in your um, you could go to format and go to paragraph styles and make sure heading one is um, updated, right? But I know I don't really have to do that because most of mine are done. So you go through your document, you check through, you make sure everything is on its own page, the double spacing is correct. Um, don't worry about my red my red stuff, that red stuff is just because this is um this is a template that I'll use. And then we reach this point here called references. References is where you have the hardest job in this part, right? References would mean that you have to reference everything that you looked for in this um I so if you want our website to find the course of a web developer. If you read a book to find out how much it will cost to build a database, if you read some sort of documentation somewhere or a PDF or some kind of thing to say that you figured out how to implement the, um, the website in a particular way, you had to figure out how much hosting fees will cost, you had to get information about how long hosting takes, all those sort of things. All those are references that you had to do because you had to research for your um, solution where, where you have um, the comparison table. In this comparison table, you actually have to do real research to find all the information about all the things you have to put in. So I have things like software, Node.js or Node Package Manager, that's to build websites using JavaScript. All those things you would have had to find out about because your information technology, is hardware and software, 
and the um, information system that you're actually building because it's all one big information system. But you have to make sure that you like you actually got real references. So I will show you all that I got the course for a laptop from Amazon, right? So I've, I'm going to show you our website called um, scribir.com, scribir, S C R I B B R, right?com. And then you look for APA citation. You see citation tools and choose APA citation generator. All right. Now, when you go there, you will see that you could generate a citation. So I'm going to go from the top and show you what, what it will look like. APA citation generator. Well, I have this one here already, which is the no over thing, but right. So I'll go and do it again, right? So I'll go and click add and I'll choose website. So the website. So I'm going to take the exact URL that I got from the website about the, the laptop that I say that is the best laptop they should use, right? So I take the same URL, I copy it from the bar on top, and then I go and paste the URL inside here. Because I said URL. If it's a book, you put in a book. If it's a PDF, you put in a PDF. Doesn't matter, right? Then I have to put in a title, so I'll put in a title and I'll just put Lenovo ThinkPad. ThinkPad. Then they have the URL again, so I'll paste back the URL. And they say it's not a valid URL. Why did they say it's not a valid URL? I don't know. But let me just copy it again. And put it in. Alright, the citation generator will save your life. Pretty easily. Initials, they're usually for initials. If there's a book that's written by somebody, you put the initials of the author. But there is no author here for initials to be put in, so you're leaving it out. And then you see the publication date, the date that it was published. Well, on the um on the Amazon website you'll see the date that the um that the item was published. Somewhere in product details they will show you the date that it was put in. Where is that? Mm, oh, August 3rd, 2020, right? So I'll just put August 3rd, 2020. So day will be the third of August is the eighth month, July, August 2020. That's when it was first published on the Amazon website. And then the date access is when I actually access it, which will be, I don't know, January, the, um, the 1st of January, 2022. Right. And then the website name is Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. So when I click site source, it will create a citation like this. And all I have to do is click on it and copy it. When I click on it's copied, then I go back to my document and boom, it's formatted exactly in APA. Did I choose APA? Yeah, we did choose APA, yeah. It's formatted exactly in APA. So you'll see like there's a certain part that is it italics and another part that is that, then have the date, then have the actual link and whatnot. Every reference that you have to put, anywhere that you get information from that pertains to you finding out how to solve this problem, that is what you want to do. So. S C R I B B I R dot com. Go there, citation tools, APA citation generator, put in everything. And you need to have some citations. At, at worst, you should have all of the things, all of the equipment that you listed. You should be able to show the equipment costs inside there to show that you actually went and found the price of the of, of the stuff. And um, if you found out any other information about packages and hosting and all those kind of things when they do it at a website, when they do it at a database, you found out about the cost of the software, the cost of the laptop, the networking that might have to put in place, the access to it, all those different things, you want to put that in. And once you put all those references in, and then you go, go and you continue down now and you check your appendix and you see that your appendix has numbers. And each part of the appendix, there's a graph, each one of them is named properly, you know which, which figure is which, graph one, graph two. Now you could go and double check your, re, your questionnaires and interviews and whatnot and check to make sure they are all referring to the correct page in the appendix. And once they're referring to the correct page in the appendix, you have formatted your document properly. And then you could go and check now. Oh, I put references at the bottom. Maybe references could go before the appendix. So that's a mistake that I would have made there, yeah. Right? References could go before the appendix. References could go after the appendix. Depends on how your teacher um, thinks, but the document would be laid out just like that. And then you could safely say, all right, I've finished my I. And then you probably just want to proofread it for grammatical errors and stuff. 
and submit it and then see what you need to tweak here and there but the thing is your layout is so good that all you have to do is go and change some little things here and there and you should be good and that will get you the last two marks which is the easiest marks the hardest part here is to get the APA formatting for the references but everything else structuring cover content page abstract present and complete that's cake that's real easy so that is the end of the unit one section of the IA and the next set of videos are going to come will be the unit 2 section where we're going to take this exact problem and we're going to translate it into unit 2 and actually solve the issue which is we're actually going to build the website so some of you all who in like lower 6 you're going to stop here and say okay cool I'll stop right now and I'll wait till upper 6 to watch the rest of the videos and some of you all who in upper 6 you probably watch through all the videos just to make sure you had everything correct so now you could go into um into your unit two and actually build it but that's it there right so it's been a nice journey i'll see you all in the other videos when we actually build the website and build the database which i have to psych myself up for because yeah the syllabus kind of agree when it comes to unit two also so see you in the next video thanks for watching the video i hope it helped you a lot remember there are multiple videos that go through each different part of the ia in detail so if you want a particular part that you're looking for you can check the playlist. The playlist link will be in the bottom here. If you use any app, you can check in the app and you will see the playlist for it also to show you all the parts that are necessary. If you're looking for quality information technology and computer science classes at the Cape level, you can check us out, make it simple TT at 1868 308 8799, or you can check us online at make it simple tt.com forward slash register and use all of our free resources. But if you're looking for a class that has recordings and experience, explanations for every single thing that you need to do in the whole syllabus, you can check us out.